right, so it's Saturday, April 12th at around 6 a.m. Uh, I spent the night uh, sleeping in the village. Uh, it was definitely a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, tried to find a place to stay or shelter where I could. Um, the, the most challenging thing was probably not so much the, the sleeping outside of the cold, but feeling like you're a stranger in your hometown. That was uh, difficult to comprehend. Okay, so here we are at the start gate for the 72-hour Filmmaker Showdown. For the next 24 hours, we're going to be exploring homelessness in Whistler. What does that look like? Well, we're going to find out. It's what I need. I think homelessness in Whistler takes several different shapes. I think it looks very diverse. People are always surprised to find out that we actually have a homeless population. You know, for example, we've got um, some First Nations people that you'll see sleeping around town on benches. And then we've got the people who live in their truck or their car that are there because they're trying to save money. Maybe they're couch surfing with friends. Um, maybe they're just looking for a place to hang for a few days. It could be sharing um, staff housing uh, with like 10 other people in the room and you've got a closet and who knows when you're going to be turfed out or whatever. It's a lot of young people who are, you know, go there and then find out they can't quite make it. So what does it look like? It looks like anywhere from someone living in an underground parking garage in a sleeping bag to a woman who is fleeing an abusive relationship and without a traditional support network and looking for safe housing. Well, certainly stable, secure, and affordable housing is a basic human need. Uh, here in Whistler, we don't have uh, an emergency housing program. As an outreach worker, it's really difficult when somebody comes to me and they say, I don't have anywhere to stay tonight. Um, emergency housing in Whistler doesn't really exist. We have to ask ourselves as a community, is there a way we can deal with them in the community? Or do we have to attempt to move them to a warmer, safer place? I'd like to see homelessness addressed in Whistler just by a bit of awareness. People need your help just by your thoughts. And, and your thoughts can be driven by changing your mind from seeing someone who's homeless to seeing a person that has no home. Okay, my name is Sylvain Travers. I'm coming from to Quebec. Before I go to uh, the school and look at the TV show, you look at Vancouver Stanley Park. And it's my dream, I am five years old, for coming see Vancouver and the Rocky Mountain. How many, how many homeless people are there in Whistler? Uh, easily, 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 in a proof, 200 people. He stay in the van, he stay in the car, he stay outside, he stay everywhere. And how long have you been uh, without a home in Whistler? All my life. I think that we have really two, two choices in how we think. And that is, is that we can have a thought and an action that's based from fear, or we can have a thought or an action that's based from kindness. And if we're thinking and choosing the kindness option, then it's always something good is going to come from that. James, really nice meeting you. Appreciate you doing this. Okay, take care, all right? Yeah. Okay, I'll see you.